Everyone, thanks for joining us this afternoon. I'm Christine Stanwood. We're following a developing story out of Eddy County. Sheriff Paul Lye says it appears a body recovered yesterday is that of Amanda Inkst. Inkst was last seen by family members in October. Sheriff Lies says Inks' body was recovered from the Cheyenne River near Warwick, North Dakota. He says the Jamestown Dive and Rescue Team was able to locate the body using an underwater camera. The sheriff says there was no vehicle in the river at the scene. However, he would not get into specifics of what led them to the search in the river. Sheriff Lies says at this point it appears Inks' death was not natural. He says they're still waiting on further information from the coroner's office. The Holly Police Department is asking for help in identifying a woman they are calling a person of interest. They released two surveillance pictures of an adult female seen here that they are looking for. They say she is wanted in a shoplifting incident at Living Good on the morning of January 27th. If you recognize the woman in the pictures, you are asked to contact the Holly Police Department. Their number is on your screen, 218-483-4666. Fargo police are warning people about the return of a common phone scam where callers claim to be a relative, usually a grandchild, who has been arrested and needs money to get out, get out of jail. The scammers ask for the money to be wired out of the state, and police say if you do, it will seldom be recovered. Fargo police want to remind people to be skeptical of a phone call that asks for your money or personal information. If you receive a call like this, hang up and talk to other family members about the situation. A little overnight snowfall made the roads pretty slick this morning. Let's check in with meteorologist Robert Hahn to see if we can expect any more snow anytime soon. Robert? Yeah, some of that snow continues to linger over parts of the eastern North Dakota. That relatively light could see some very minor accumulations with that, and that will just add to the slick spots that we're still seeing in parts of the area. And it is a cold one out there. Temperatures mainly in the single digits and low teens, still two below zero in Roseau, one above in Bemidji, 10 in Detroit Lakes, 11. Here in the Fargo Moorhead area, winds relatively light, 5 to 15 miles per hour, but enough to create wind chills below zero in most locations, including a wind chill as cold as minus 14 in Roseau, 11 below in Langdon and Devil's Lake, one above here in the Fargo Moorhead area. I mentioned the snow, it continues to slide off toward the southeast, mainly some light flurry activity, some snow showers out there. And these will continue to drift off toward the south and southeast as we head through the afternoon. These should be dissipating as we head towards the evening hour. As we head through the next couple of days, going to show you the first two days of that seven-day forecast. That snow lingers west of the Red River primarily. And temperatures in the teens tomorrow, a quiet day with temperatures in the teens. However, parts of the area will see a little bit of snow tomorrow. We've got even more snow to talk about on the seven-day forecast, and we'll get to that in just a few minutes. Thanks, Robert. Mm -hmm. The 2016 presidential race turns its attention to South Carolina following last night's New Hampshire primary. Donald Trump scored a decisive victory in the crowded GOP field, and Bernie Sanders overwhelmingly defeated Hillary Clinton by more than 20 percentage points. CBS has this report from Manchester, New Hampshire. Oh, wow. Donald Trump dominated the New Hampshire Republican primary, winning 35% of the vote. He appeared on CBS this morning, saying his popularity will continue to grow. Tonight I'm going to South Carolina. We're going to have at least 10,000 people. Ohio Governor John Kasich placed second with his largely positive message, but he says he will fight back if attacked. I'm not going to take a pounding. I'm not some kind of a pincushion or a marshmallow. Ted Cruz came in third, followed closely by Jeb Bush, who says he's ready for a long fight. I think the field will winnow down eventually. I'm a patient person. And Marco Rubio, who stumbled at the last debate. I did not do well on Saturday night, so listen to this. That will never happen again. On the Democratic side, Hillary Clinton is trying to recover from a brutal loss to Bernie Sanders. He won across the board, especially with young people. Because of a huge voter turnout, and I say huge, <laughs> we won. I know I have some work to do particularly with young people. The Clinton camp quickly released a memo explaining why she's expected to do better in southern states where there are more communities of color. Bernie. Sanders is reaching out to minorities. He met with the Reverend Al Sharpton this morning in Harlem. Weijia Jang, CBS News, Manchester, New Hampshire. After a disappointing sixth place finish, Governor Chris Christie went home to New Jersey 
to consider his options. A Fargo mom says smoke alarms saved her family, and she's urging you to be ready to avoid disaster, too. Lori Bockel woke up early Saturday morning to the sound of her smoke alarms, but never smelled or heard a fire. It wasn't until she went downstairs that she saw her living room wall covered in flames. She yelled for everyone to get out, but one of them had to be rescued by firefighters. Backel says they were out of the house in under 60 seconds, and by then, the house was nearly engulfed. Minnesota, Minnesota Governor Mark Dayton is pitching the idea of six weeks of paid parental leave for all state employees, mothers, and fathers. He says it would save new parents an average of nearly $6,200 in wages. More than 35,000 state employees would be eligible for the paid parental leave benefits. Something Dayton says would make a state a more competitive employer as well. If lawmakers give the green light, Minnesota would join just three other states that offer paid leave. A Baudette Minnesota woman has been charged with two counts of theft for allegedly stealing money meant to help the families of three boaters who died on Lake of the Woods last fall. Investigators say Retina Lavalva stole money from a GoFundMe account that raised just over $27,000. In an interview with Valley News Live last month, Lavalva said there was still $7,000 in that account that had not been dispersed to the families. Lavalva is in jail awaiting her first court appearance. There's a big change coming for one of northern Minnesota's biggest winter events. Poor ice conditions on Leech Lake have created a safety concern for the upcoming Eel Pout Festival. The event is February 18th through the 21st. Only snowmobiles and ATVs will be allowed on the ice. The Eel Pout Festival event director says restrictions could be lifted if ice conditions change.